Today in this video, I'm going to talk about the copolymerization equation. Now here you can see that we have monomer M1 and M2. So we also have two polymer radicals, M1 and M2. Now, if we take this as our equation one, this as our equation two, this as our equation three, and this equation four, we can clearly write the rate of propagation for this one is K11 times one more radical one times one more radical one more one concentration. Now, so we can clearly say that the rate of change of monomer one is is the summation of our rate of propagation of our equation one and equation three because in these both cases we are getting or we are converting our monomer one to the polymer by adding monomer one to either m2 radical or m1 radical and this is the similar case for our monomer 2. So the rate of concentration of monomer 2 will be the summation of the rate of the propagation of our equation 2 and equation 4. Now, if we want to find out the relative rate for two monomers addition, all we have to do is find the ratio of these two different concentration. That means the constant rate of change of concentration of monomer 1 and monomer 2. So we get this equation here. And now we are going to assume the steady state condition. And in that case, we have to consider that the total concentration of the radicals is constant. And which gives us this particular equation here. That means the terminal repeat unit, that means our terminal polymer radicals M2 and M1 are adding the monomers M1 and M2, that means they're doing a crossover here. And this crossover is equal if you assume the steady state conditions. That gives us the rate of polymerization of 1, 2, is equal to the rate of polymerization of 2, 1. That means the rate of polymerization of the crossover monomers are equal. I mean, you get the idea, right? Now, I have already written the copolymerization co equation because that will make us finish this video a little bit quicker and so that I don't waste your time that much because this is a simple math. So... If you look at this particular equation here, here we are saying that that our this this term these terms are equal, right? So we can clearly write that this m1 radical is equal to this all right now we are gonna put in this value into this equation here now if you put this value in this equation here we are getting this particular thing here all right now all you have to see here is that we have our one more radical two concentration here 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 and here so we are having our one more two radical concentration in both numerator and denominator so we can eliminate them now we are ending up with this equation where we can clearly write this this one here and we are having our monomer one square because we have one number one here and here right now after this equation here we are dividing this whole numerator and the denominator with our k21 term and if we do that we if we do that before doing that i'm gonna say you that this 
R1 is the reactivity ratio for the monomer of 1. And that is our K11 over K12. And R2, this is a reactivity ratio for our monomer 2, which, which is our K22N over K21. So here we are going to divide this whole, this numerator and the denominator uh, by K21. So we are going to eliminate, we are going to eliminate this K21 here, this one here, this one here, and we're also getting a K21 here because there is no K21 uh, with K22. Right, so as I've said already that R1 is a reactivity ratio, which is K11 over K22. That means this K11 over K22, that is R1 times M1 squared over M2 plus M1 and here we are in the denominator, we are left with M1 plus our reactivity ratio 2, which is K22 over K21 times M2. Now, if we multiply the numerator and the denominator with M2, we get R1 M1 squared plus M1 times M2, and we are also getting M1 times M2 plus R2 times M2 squared. So that means our this particular ratio of our concentration change, that means this one here is equal to this one. This is nothing but like we're taking our M1 common out here. So we're left with R1 M1 plus M2 over M1 R2 M2 plus M1. Good, so this is our copolymerization equation. I hope you guys understood. This is just simple math. If you have some trouble in understanding this, you can pause the video and just figure it out a little bit. Now, here, if you want to find out this equation in terms of mole fraction, now we have our capital F1, which is the fraction of our one more one in copolymer. I mean monomer in the polymer and F2 is the fraction of monomer 2 in the copolymer that means in both 2 and this small f1 which is the fraction of our m1 monomer 1 in the monomer mixture that means in the feedstock where we have a mixture of our monomer 1 and 2 and this small f1 is the fraction of monomer 1 in the monomer mixture. Right, so this f1 is simply nothing but our M1 over the mixture of M1 plus M2. So F2 simply will give the molar fraction of M2 over the mixture M1 plus M2. Right. Now, if you want to find out the ratio of this F1 over F2, you can clearly see that our this term and this term will be eliminated. So we'll be left with M1 over M2, right? So if you wanna put the value of F1 here like this, so here we'll do a simple thing here. Wherever we'll see M1, this term comes from the previous reaction, like this one. So, and this is like the common out here, M1 and M2. So we'll put F1 wherever we'll see our M1 here. This is just a simple shortcut for this math one. So we'll put two M1, so we have F1, so F1 and F1, which will give us F1 square, and R1 F1 square plus F1 and F2, and this is R2 F2 square plus F1 and F2. Right. Now, if you wanna calculate the monomer fraction in the copolymer, which is capital F1, that, that gives us the rate of change of our monomer concentration over the mixture of, you know, like the combination of our concentration of M1 and M2, I mean the rate of change of our concentration of M1 and M2, and which we can also write this, like 1 over 1 plus this and this part will come as the denominator, whatever we write here. So as this thing, we are going to put this particular value, 
which is the value of this one into this equation as as you can see this is m1 over m2 and here is m2 over m1 so this term is gonna be flipped so r2 f2 square plus f1 f2 will be in the in numerator so here we can write this and from here this is the simple map this r1 f1 square plus f1 f2 will go here and if we calculate we are gonna end up with r1 f1 square plus 2 f1 f2 plus r2 f2 square as the denominator so this is the video today i hope you have understood the derivation i'll see you next time take care